And we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. We have with us a very special guest all the way from Sheffield. The man himself, the Commonwealth middleweight champion, Liam Cameron. Liam, how are you doing? Good, mate. How are you? I'm good. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's been long, but we've had a nice interview, Mark. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we can get into things and we can speak about... Obviously, the first thing we've got to talk about is Scott Westgarth. That was the last time, um, I guess, I filmed Scott was when I was up and I saw you actually win the middleweight title off Sam Sheedy. And then after that, I heard the unfortunate news about Scott Westgarth. Um, how close were you to Scott? Um, I saw him a couple of times. I saw him at the weigh-in for Sheedy and, and me. It's just a sad thing what happened I can't believe it. We're a massive shock to everyone at Sheffield and around Boxing Circle and his family. It's, it's, it were horrible to hear. Um, tragic news. I was devastated. I mean, I'd, I'd seen him once. I'd, I've seen you caught in box. And then I read and I saw Scott Westgarth. I thought, oh, maybe he's had a baby or something's happened or something good. And then I discovered he passed away. I was like, shocked. I was like, oh, my good Lord. I was stunned. I had to read the article about four times because I couldn't believe it myself. Yeah, it was just, it was just horrible, wasn't it? The news you don't expect it. You don't. You just. You don't expect to have a fight and then and you're not coming out of it like alive and stuff. You won the fight. And just tragic news to hear. It? Absolutely. It affects every boxer um, hearing news like stuff like that. Any just reiterates how much fighters put on the line, how dangerous the sport is, yeah. and how us, the boxing fans, can take it so lightly. The, the the amount of pains you guys go through and girls go through to this sport. So our thoughts are with Scott Westgarth and his family. Um, rest in peace, champ. That's it, man. So on to Liam Cameron. Uh you're now fighting this weekend. Tell everybody about it. Um, I was down to fight Danny Butler. Uh, trained for, I didn't particularly train for Danny Butler. I just trained out. Uh, I did for Sheedy, but I've upped the intensity. I've upped, well, not the intensity, because I, I can't train as hard as I'm training. So I've just uh, worked on a little bit, so I'm holding my feet and stuff, whipping them shots and getting... Getting better, I'm just getting better. So, it's, so much. It's it's great to see my progression now. Um, I've teamed up with a new trainer with Chris uh, Mike White. Okay, he's just been adding to my game. Little stuff I'm doing. The little you bang cup of cuts I've got off to a team. Um, and the body shots. I've been uh, in sparring partners. Been doing four four rounds each with sparring partners and I've been staying in for 12 rounds and it's I've been it's been great training's gone great so, I don't know how everyone says it but it actually has gone great so what's been the what inspired you to change your trainer um I've not changed my trainer um what happened is we moved to another gym at Fighting Fit um uh, with my wife um uh, six weeks before the Sheedy fight ah because um, what people don't know about the Sheedy fight, I went up because he, he, he pulled out the first time I had an holiday booked. So I actually went on holiday without no one knowing, really. And um, I only had seven weeks, six weeks to train for that fight properly. So this time I've had a full 10 week camp. Um, so uh, ideally, I'm going to be a lot, a lot better. Um, so yeah, I'm fighting Nick, Nick Gemman. So, wait, you were going to fight Butler. What's going on with all these opponents? Who was you originally meant to fight in the beginning? Well, I was fighting Danny Butler. I had a message a week and a half ago. Um, Danny Butler's pulled out. No, no reason given. Just pulled out. He's not put nothing on his social media, uh, what I can see anyway. He's just pulled out the fight. Uh, I had people saying, ah, they were up for it. Ah, who going to beat me? He's going to do this. It's best he's been training. Then just don't don't want the fight when it plans to cut the mustard, do they say, or whatever it is. So, wait. So, so what do you think? Why do you think you've, they've got an opportunity to fight you? 
on free t free to air TV or well on free yeah. view, why why Come not take the opportunity? Title as well. Come and a, a Commonwealth title fight as well. TV. And they still don't want it, so um, I just don't know. When I boxed Sheedy, I did L I, I boxed for Peanuts to uh, fight him, um, and plus I did any, anything just to get the fight, just for the opportunity. So that shows you what I want to be in this sport, um, just pushing on. I want to keep going and going up and up and up and up. And so I can't go up no more. That's what I want to do. Okay, um, talk to us back. Let's go back about the Sheedy fight for a second. In reflection, what do you think was the key points to you beating Sam Sheedy in the end? Um, I, I would just say, um, do you know what it is? I'm, I'm actually a bit more mature in me, in me. I know it sounds daft, but I'm a bit mature in my head, to be fair. Okay. Um, not doing daft stuff. Before I'd make weight, I'd sit at home for three hours without having a drink of water and stuff and just be watching TV and not not refueling. This time I've paid for I've paid for stuff like dietitian, all my all my diet. Um, so I've been doing that, and it's actually fueled me that much for training. Before I'd be going to going to training like this week, but now I'm, I'm going fueled every time, so I can I can get more out of my body. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and how's it been since being Commonwealth champion? What's changed in your life? Nothing. Nothing's changed, to be fair. It's a bit... What it is, um, I was expecting, I thought, yes, I'm going to get all these sponsors now coming in. This time, um, but no, nothing's changed. I'm just a Commonwealth champion, fifth in Britain. And a but... bit of a, a void, really. I need to... I'm going to have this fight. Then we're going to... I'm going to look on to really push me up them rankings and to really. Liam, are you there? We've gone missing. Hello? Yeah, you're still there, Liam. It sounds like somebody yeah, kidnapped so, you. Uh, so, yeah, um, we've offered, we offered Brian Rose a fight. He, he turned it down. He said his trainer wants him to have a couple of warm up fights before fighting me. Okay. So this is a guy who's. Being British champion, he's boxed for a world title, and I'm just on the up, so he needs a couple of warm up fights, and then that's that's um, confidence. Okay. Um, we've offered Tommy Langford fight, he's ran like Forrest Gump. Um, we've, we've offered loads of people a fight, um, I'm told, that they're just not taking it for whatever okay. reason. Let, I let don't me, know what it is. Let me ask you a question. Let's be just straight up honest with me, yeah? Or as yeah. honest as you can be sometimes yeah. you hear people don't want to take the fight sometimes it's because of the negotiations and the money that's yeah. on the table and they're getting paid peanuts is it that the reason why they're running from you rather than they're running for you because of other reasons well put it this way it could be that yeah put it this way if i were going to fight brian rose i'll fight him in blackpool okay where it financially works for both of us okay so that's that um, sorted. Danny Butler, I'll fight anyway. You don't have to be Sheffield. Um, I'll fight anyway, mate. I'll fight in their backyard for my title if, they, if it's better financial. Oh, and another thing, he, he pulled out twice. What's his name? Elliot Matthews. I was down to fight him at an earlier day and he pulled out with 12 weeks to go. Why? A shoulder injury. Okay, and the second time? I don't know what the second time was. Um, I'm sure it was the injury again. But now he's fighting a French kid, so for an EU title. So it, there, it's there as well. Um, and I was fighting him at your call in his backyard, and it worked out financially better for both of us. So, and he put that. So that's, a, that's another example. Do you think, um, how much is the media an important part of a boxer's life? Massive, because I'm just, uh, I need to get as much publicity as I ever can. Um, I know them five losses, people are going to say, ah, they've lost five times. There's no reasons why I've lost and, and stuff, what's gone on and that. They'd probably say, I wish they'd come down, do you know what I mean, and start, start again, but they are what made me 
who I am now and really um, give me a kick up by side and putting everything right, what's gone wrong in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about the Moss, as if it actually helped me. Like I was saying, I'm a bit mature and I'm dead and a bit, a bit older, wiser. So your fight's on TV this weekend. That's going to yeah. give you coverage as it is. But um, I, the whole point of media coverage is so important in a in a boxer yeah. or athlete's career, an elite athlete yourself in the Commonwealth. Yeah. What do you talk to us about the effects of good uh, media coverage on your for your career, for example, the effects of that, and then not getting media coverage? Well, that, well. I'm number five in Britain and a Commonwealth champion, and I've had no, no really no exposure. To be fair, um, I've had no IFL TV to go around, to go around and to go and talk to every box. I've had, I've messaged them for interviews. I've never had a uh, message back. I messaged the uh, on the globe.com message them. They've been in Sheffield like every week. No messages, boxes. This is what I like about people like you. What come and interview people like me? Do you know what I mean? And just like give me the chance to speak and um, sell myself. But I'm sure in another year or six months, I'll be I'll be all over them boxing newses and boxing monthlies and stuff. So I look well, forward to making that change as well. I guess it, I guess it helps when uh, when uh, media actually do work with you obviously you say things yeah. like that which be positive and it's good yeah, that it is good and it's i'm creative. sure i I'm, i've got every belief in you liam that you will get the coverage that you deserve i'm sure of that yeah. thank you i appreciate that and i, I hope i do myself because it, it's a it's an horrible sport it will not horrible because it's it's, it's done, done a lot for me but just the little politics side and stuff like that and Maybe after this fight, we'll be getting more stuff. Um, and Why do you think you're not getting the coverage you deserve? Never mind BWTM Sports for one second. Why do you think you're not getting ma uh, mainstream coverage? Maybe because I've, I've lost before. And this, this, um, I don't know what it is. I don't know if these TV people, I don't know if these interviewers are getting paid off certain people to go around and speak. I don't know if I have to pay them to speak to me. I don't know this. I I don't. I ain't got a clue. But I've shouted out to loads of um, interview people and only people like yourself and stuff. What a lot of great for the game. I've got back to me and actually done an interview with Miss Ola Spates for your for your YouTube think, thing. No worries. No worries. That's what we're here for. You uh, message me, and within five minutes, ten minutes, we've got you you've sorted, right? That's it. That's, That's it. how it goes. You mentioned me to Golovkin. Um, Golovkin's trainer, Abel Sanchez, what I was in about. Absolutely. And uh, your thoughts? Let's talk about this second. The middleweight division. Do you watch middleweight boxing all apart from Golovkin? Um, I'm a massive Golovkin fan. Yeah, I've heard he's coming to the Sheffield um, to do a speech. So I'll, be a, I'll be ringside for that one. But yeah, I do watch middleweight boxing. Um, I think it's a great division, um, and there's some great fights out there for everyone to have. So we in yourself. Okay, let, let's let's say you secure, you win your championship bout against um, your next opponent. You do that. Then, who do you want to face in middleweight division in Britain and then the world? You've got Martin Murray. You know he's he's going to be fighting Saunders. What are your thoughts on that fight? Well, I think Billy Joe Saunders will beat Martin Murray, and I think Martin Murray was saying he'd retire. So I don't really, you can't really count him. Uh, just I'd love to fight Brian Rose. He's been unboxing a world title, and he's he's actually a, a good fighter in itself. He's, he's no he's no muppet. That will put me to see where I am. I, I only see me stopping Brian Rose. To be fair, but. I think he's um, he's had his idea now. It's time. What about a unification bout between yourself and Tommy Langford? That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. We've put the fight to people. Uh, I think Tommy Langford will vacate um, the belt after this one. I'm, I'm sure he will. And maybe me and is it Mark Efron? We yep. can 
we can do a unification with a Commonwealth from British. But anyone, I'll, I'm willing to fight anyone. With me, I'll fight anyone. What about a European title shot? Is that something you'd be interested in? Yeah, that as well. There's so much options I can go for. Uh, they've just got to be put to me, and I'll say, yeah, yeah, take that one. Let's have it. It's good to Italy and be the European champion. Let's go over there. Let's have an holiday as well while we're at it. So, are you are you are you crazy enough to just take a world title shot on on short notice? Yeah, I'm. A, I, I just want to push and push, and I want to. I've done every bit of learning I can do. Like no, no, like I, I'm saying, I'm the finished article, and I'm I'm a great fighter. I'm not saying that. I'm saying. I'm ready to test myself, go out there and fight, fight the best, I think, anyway. Um, I've got people in the room. Shout out to the people that are in the room. Uh, of course, Trap, Trap Media asked the question, what do you think of Charlo and would you fight Gerard Hurd if you move it to 160? Yeah, definitely. Um, them fights bring big TV and they bring big money, so why not? What? Why not fight him? Uh, I'm in this game. It'd be a dream come true to fight an American fight with one of them big names. Absolute dream come true. So whether people laugh and say, oh, you've got no chance, I've got to believe in myself, do you know? So, do you know something? The, 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 you remind me very much of Clinton Woods, a guy from yeah. Sheffield who was very downplayed, didn't pay, people didn't pay much attention. Didn't think much yeah. of him. Lost a few fights. Then got yeah. taken under Dennis Hobson. Went Many to America. Built that. him up. Came back. And he became world champion. So Many people said that. So I can't... I can't if I follow in Clinton's footsteps, I can't, I can't be doing bad, can I? So hopefully I can achieve what Clinton achieved. He was a great fighter. And do you know what? It, it probably... It might be a toss of a coin who's got the best chin in me in him. Because... With Sheffield, and he's known for an iron chin, and I've I've got one too. So it's good. He's a good fighter. Um. Uh. Uh. G. Reaver says Tommy Langford beat Sheedy split decision. Langford stopped Sheedy. Um, uh, Liam stopped Sheedy. Uh, keep doing. And, and Mikey says keep doing your thing, Liam. Keep winning, and people will have to take note. Lesser fighters than yourself have got big fights and title shots. I'm confident yeah. it will come. Nice one, thanks. Yeah, uh, my, my aim as well is to to just get there. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's motivation. I'm motivated to get there and do it. I'm going to be on them big, big shows and stuff and my name being mentioned. Or when you go on forums, I want my name, Cameron, Cameron, Cameron. Do you know what I mean? I can't wait for that day. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just turning to... To do to to be the best I can be, so I'm sure we can do something about that. Um, Kenny says, um, BWTM92 says Langford is crap. Fight the winner of uh, Cox Rider or even the loser. Well, I'm dirt weight above me, Cox and Rider, but come down to middleweight. Uh, see, I've got an advantage at middleweight. I'm, I'm big and I'm strong. That's my advantage. Uh, uh, Liam, Liam, you need to speak into the phone a bit better because you're sounding a bit blurred and slurred. Can you hear me now? That's better, that's better, mate. Go ahead. Yeah, if they, if they come down to middleweight, I'd fight any one of them. Um, Cox is a great fight. I think Cox will be Ryder, to be fair. Okay. Um, Trap Media asks the question, what caught you into boxing and what keeps you motivated in doing it? Um... What got me into box? I can remember my nan buying me Rocky one two and three and cassette. I used to have an orange peel as a gum shield in my mouth and start hitting this teddy on bed. I used to watch Rocky and I think I want to do that. Then obviously I went to gym and it all started from then. And I've never knew why I wanted to box. Um, I don't know what it was. I don't know if I just loved to fight and that or what. But now. Nah, um, the reason is because I want to reach the goals in life and I've, I've just be a well-respected fighter and um, get, get some get some money out of it as well and I get some belts and let my family be proud of me, you know. So 
Sa- Sam Shidi in his camp, uh, Sam Shidi in defense of his title against you was very critical of your mental state. That he felt that you were a kind of guy that was inconsistent, and obviously you proved him wrong on that night. Is this just? A, it was just. Was that just a one night thing with you, Liam? Or are we going to see you continue that good run and beat your next opponent and move on? That Liam Cameron before the Shidi fight. Would not stand a chance with this Liam Cameron, I think. So much different. Um, just just, just the mindset and everything. Just just growing up, probably. And like I've said before, just growing up and training hard. And you won't, be, you won't believe how hard I'm training from before. It's, it's quite a big step up what I'm doing. Like 20 rounds pads and stuff and 12 mile runs and that. And I'm, 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 I'm doing it like it's... Like, what, what's up right now? You're breaking you know, up I used again. Morning, I used to be moaning over like a four mile run. Okay. But now I'm doing 12 miles, six miles. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. I'm on about going to, um, to Lanzarote after fight to watch the Iron Man because I'm eyeing that up. I might even jump on that next year, <laughs> the Iron Man challenge. <laughs> Don't do anything silly. We need you in boxing. Um, next yeah. question from Track Media asks Which one of his fights? Did he learn the most from? Which one of the fights have I earned my most? You've learnt, which one of the fights you've had, Liam, in your career that you've learnt the most from? It has to be the Zach Dunn fight in Australia. Okay, why is that? Um, because uh, he, he went IBF, he was not IBF, IBO. World champion, he owned a WBC silver, and they were like number eight in on box rate world rankings when I boxed him, and and I, I thought I had a, I threw the fight away, and it, it, the Australian judges had it like four rounds to him, and I thought to myself, do you know if I did everything right, I'd, I'd beat this kid, I'd beat him. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. a bit of a belief. So after that fight, I, I, I like just a big change for me. Okay. Uh, Mikey asks, Tyree Nurse is going is heading out to Australia next month. What advice can you give a fellow Brit going out to Australia? Um, it's just that time difference is, is it's quite a struggle, but you get used to it after mm. you know, five days, four or five days, you you're back on track, but Absolutely. Yeah, I can remember being wide awake at after clocks, like yep. to get up out of bed. Just, just that really. Just get that right and try to stay awake as much as you can. You know. Yep. Um, so your, your sleep time. From personal experience, I can say that going to Australia, you need at least a week to acclimatize, at least a week to acclimatize and get used yeah. to the sleeping patterns because it's so different. I, mean, I was working yeah. out there for, I was doing coaching, I was coaching out there and the time difference is so different, you know. Um, so you yeah. really do need that time to acclimatize before taking any yeah. fights. But that's And that's fighting. You need time to acclimatize. More so than going to America because that's maybe four or five different backward or four, going backwards. That's it's one thing. not that much, is it? No, it isn't. But Australia's like 12 hours. It's a, a different situation altogether um yeah. how's your diet been in camp um liam um it's best uh, what it were last time because it pulled out i was lighter I, I was i kept my weight down in training so i, I would for 10 weeks i was like 11 okay. 13 and it were it probably weakened me a bit doing that. This time I've trained a bit heavier and I felt a lot better. Now I'm cutting the weight. You're breaking up again. I'm four pounds over at minute. Okay. Um, with drinking six litres of water a day. So, that, so yeah, it's, it's all, good, all going good on that side at weights. Now, your position, would you fight somebody like Chris Eubank Jr. or would you see that's too much of a risk for your career? No, definitely no risk. Um, um, I think there was something going out about Dennis offered to, to fight um, Chris Eubank Jr. Obviously on the on their channel and stuff, and maybe for the Commonwealth, I'm sure Dennis put that out to him. Well, 
And Eubank is only down the road from me. I can always go to the gym and knock on the door and ask him if he'd fight you. Yeah, that's it. Get knocking, bro. <laughs> we'll have to go down together and we'll have a knock on door. We'll have a cup of tea while we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, any, do you know what? Anybody, I will fight. It does. It doesn't matter. I know people say, "Oh, he's keen it bigger." I'm really not keen it bigger. Now. I mean it when I say it. I know you said to me before that he'd love to go to Big Bear and spar with Golovkin. Is that still the case? Yeah, definitely. Let me. If he said to me next week, day after your fight, with, I want some rounds to spar. I'll be on that plane. Hours before, do you know what I mean? I'll be at airport. Well, Man. the two times I've spoken to Abel Sanchez, he says, I say to him, Liam Cameron would like to come to gym. He says, Who's this Liam Cameron? I want to know who this Liam Cameron is. I don't know who he is. I said, He yeah. beat Sam Sheedy, he's the Commonwealth champion. And I actually mentioned, I love it. <laughs> I sent him, to I, I sent him, just tell him, I'll spawn go off again free. I will spawn him for zero money. Just pay, I'll pay for my flight, just put me up in an accommodation and I'll spar him for free. So you don't have to put all sparring partners. Right. Okay. Well I'll 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 uh, I'll talk Abel I'll talk to Abel about that. And uh he I said to him, I didn't mention your name and he said, Who are you? I didn't think he meant it disrespectfully, so he wanted to know who you were. So um yeah, I'll 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 have another word with Abel. Why not? Yeah, that's it. I can remember my picture on Kazakhstan, newspaper, my, my face, but then when you, you put it on, uh, yep. Kazakhstan, so I hate you. You would have to speak we'll up. Get there, we'll get there, we might have to beg on his hands and knees, but I'm sure. Well, all you have to do is say something here. The U Ukrainian news normally pick up what we have to say. So uh, pick it up, say what say you've got to say, send a message out to Ukrainian news, and uh, yeah. then we'll get it out there for you. So a message to the right. Ukrainian news and people. I might, what do you call it, just do a walking to turn up one bag at gym. I might just knock on Abel's door and listen, I'm with Cameron. I'll be shooting cheesy fight. Just for fun. You know, I'm at Cameron. Liam, me Liam, off, Liam, 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 you have to repeat all that because you sound muffled. Say that again. I said, I'll just knock on his door with one bag like the walking did and just say, I'm Liam Cameron. Um, you can't turn me away, can it, from Britain? I don't think it'd be that harsh, so I might just knock on his door, press his doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll see what we can do. We'll make sure you'd have to fly all the way to um to uh, uh Big Bear to get turned away. Yeah, I'll run up hills, you know. From, careful from airport. To Ca Big Bear, careful, up he so might get. I hope you know the difference between Golovkin and Gassiev. He's, he's a he's a <laughs> <laughs> Put me in with him, I'm definitely not going over. <laughs> what 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 do you make of um the final between uh, Callum Smith and um, George Groves? Do you know if you would have asked me six months ago, I would have said, "Oh, Callum Smith can kind of destroy him." Did you know now nah, I'm favouring Groves to win quite easy? Okay. So that that's my pick. I don't know if Callum Smith's struggling at the weight now. I don't know if he needs a move up because he's, he's massive. He's quite, he's big. Have you met Callum? You've met Callum Smith, haven't you? Yeah, I've, I've sparred with him and I've fought him twice in amateurs. Okay. So he's, he's, he's about an head bigger than me. Wow. If, if not more. Do you know what I mean? If not more, so it's crazy when I, I couldn't believe it when I sparred with my big I totally were. Um, not, and he's not like he's not frail as well. He's not like like a noodle. He's he's quite got a bit of size to him. Okay, what's your thoughts on um, James the Gale's uh, return match with uh, Callum Truax winning? I never watched it, but maybe people are saying James the Gale's shot. Mm -hmm. uh, this Truax might have done what I've done and done everything right and actually improved as a fighter. So it, it might be that case, do you know what I mean? So um, he looks quite strong, that, that other kid, and he could punch a bit. Yeah. 
So yeah, James Aguil did what he had to do and win his world title back. So that's that's great for him. Is there anybody in the middleweight division, in the British middleweight division, you'd like to get your hands on, you'd, apart from Tommy Langford? Um, it'd have to be Billy Joe Saunders, wouldn't it? Because he's the man in Britain and he's got a world title. So it'd have to be him. A dream shot at Billy Joe Saunders. How does Liam Cameron, without being disrespectful, how do you cut the gap between Commonwealth champion and world championship level? What do you have to do to make the gap? Um, do you know, realistically, what I think it is, this box for a WBO intercontinental title and win it. It gets you top 10. You see all these fighters. Um, Tommy Langford's number six by IBF. It's only because he's fought for a IBF Intercontinental. Maybe I need to fight for one of them next. Is that the route that you think you're going to have to go down, fighting for an Intercontinental belt to become yeah. ranked? To, that, to be that... fair, yeah. Um, I think we've had, a, we've had a talk with Dennis, and that could be that route. What we're going to do, go, go down and um, fight for a... Like, in the, like the Eliminator things, whatever they are, the, the Intercontinentals and what. I don't really pay much attention why it is intercontinental or national. One of them titles, um, I think we've got to add to get into them rankings. The other thing, the Lee... WBC had me at number 30. Yep. You were ranked... That's actually, that's a lie. You're 15th by the WBC last time I checked. And that was less than a week ago. Is that what it is? You're ranked 15 by the WBC. You have to send me that. I've not, I've not seen it. So. And I, I think yeah. I did that because I was looking for opponents for Golovkin and justifying it. And the, the other fight I kept talking and banging on about for you to get is Spike O'Sullivan. You were getting yeah. Spike O'Sullivan at middleweight. It'd be a great fight. That'd be a great fight, yeah. I think we offered Spike O'Sullivan fight years ago, but it just didn't make sense, probably. It was short notice and... Stuff like that, but I can remember his name getting popped up. Yeah, he'd be, that'd be a great fight. Strong, come forward, banger. Exactly. Two styles, two styles could clash with that one. That could be a that could be a bloodbath. That one. That'd so, be a great. I think that's a great fight. I think stylistically, it's a great fight. He'll come forward. You'll come forward. You ain't gonna give no ground. He ain't gonna give no ground. A great fight. That's it. England, it's Ireland. You know, you know, he's gonna talk a lot of smack. Spike, and we love Spike. Good friends, Spike, Spike I am. Spike. Yeah. Might be even a scuffle at a um, press conference. You don't know. Do there you? you go. England versus Ireland. Oh, I could build this. I was talking to Dennis about this before. Spike or Sullivan, yeah. uh, Liam Cameron, what a fight. Yeah, you have to put it out. Get, get, the, pub, get the ball rolling. Well, I, well I, I, you know what? I, I just do what I do at BWTM. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Absolutely. Boy, that gets me to America on itself, you know. So. Absolutely. Um. You got to in in Sheffield. Um. Yeah, yeah absolutely. A fight. That'd be amazing. I mean, look when Brook for uh spends in Sheffield. Look at the crowd that oh, drew. Yeah. Oh yeah, true. Well, Brooks developed his right. Uh, developed that for years and years, and that. That crowd were great, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bram, Bram and you got to give Brooke credit for that. Absolutely. And here's another question. This is a bit more of a difficult question and not maybe one you don't want to answer, but I've seen some of the most loyal people in boxing say, I'll never leave this person, I'll never leave that person, and they'll shoot people down about being loyal or being disloyal, and the next minute you'll see them jumping ship four or five years yeah. later and saying, and then join up with the person they said they never join up with. Yeah, In and the, the promoter's slagging him off because he's got that person. Yeah. They end up swapping fighters, then he's slagging other one off. I've seen that a few times, yeah. It's, it's crazy. That's so, a bit contradictory. For your, in your position, Liam, have you been approached, you don't have to say if, and you don't have to say when or who it was, have you ever been approached by a rival promoter since you've become Commonwealth champion? Not actually the arrival promoter that I've... Hold on, hold on. I can't hear you. You have to, be, you have to say it louder. Not actual, not actual rival promoter, but um, I've been a, approached that I could go with this person and that person. So, 
um, and people are interested. So um, I've not actually been approached to them myself, but yeah, it's come ac across where they've tried to. OK, Liam, what do you like? I mean, I've met you and I think you're a really nice guy, really affable and you can fight. You can definitely fight. Who is Liam Cameron as a person? Um, are you what, what, who are you in terms of if you're going to sell yourself to people? Who are you, Liam Cameron? Um, I'm, a, I'm a family person. I don't like being I don't like being out of my family's way. I like being I like being in house with him. Mm -hmm. um, just like just 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 a person, just an easy, just laid back. To be fair, just sitting on settee with my phone on my games and stuff, and um, just being with my family. That's best thing. That's best closest thing to me. Is my family. Okay. In terms of that. Um, are you prepared to leave your camp to go abroad? Like, if there was a big offer for you, say, look, Liam, free fight deal. We want you in America. We, we like what your style is, but you're going to have to leave your, your family on three fights to base yourself in America. Would you do it? Yeah, I'd have to. Yeah, it killed me to do it, but in the bigger picture, it's something you couldn't turn down. And my family would understand that. And it's they push me on to do it myself, so yeah, I'd have to do it. Okay, okay. Let's talk a bit about Canelo. Or you know, yeah. What are your thoughts on the whole ban? The fact that he was he was banned for a year, then it ended up being suspended for six months for uh, uh, Clint Blue troll in his system. Well, it's just too it's his it's his etched steroids, done it. Whatever he's done, he's atomized, injected him. He's definitely done that. Hundred percent, but six months bans crazy. He should he should be banned for life and fined. Wow, because Definitely. I just spoke to Carson Jones. He spied Canelo. He's obviously friends with Gennady Golovkin. I just finished talking to him, as you know, about fifteen minutes ago, and he said to me, and when he started his career, he was a scrawny, scrawny guy, and then all of a sudden he just put on this massive amount of weight. Yeah, he said that's. Oh, Go ahead. Proof is juiced. It's proof is juiced. It's his fear and his blood. You don't go in your blood or your, your pee uh, if you've not had it. So you think he definitely did it then? Yeah, 100%. He definitely did it. Don't get me wrong. Hold on, hold on. You've got, you, you got to clear, you, um, speak clearly again because you're muffling up again. I still think he'd win a world title. I, think it's, I don't think it's done a much difference, but... He's still cheated, isn't he? Uh, I still think he's a great boxer, great fight, and he was still destined to do great things, but it's took a bit of a... It's just sugar-coated it a bit now, isn't it? Like, he's cheated, unless... Unless he's got pure evidence saying he had But people are saying, like Carson Jones said, the bulk, the way he put on weight so quickly was concerning. I don't know because after my fight, I could well, it were cakes I'm eating. I could absolutely, I could do it myself. You know what I mean? So yeah, I but there's a difference. Really... We're talking about the solid muscle. You look like a beast yeah. afterwards. Well, that uh, yeah. Well, proofs, proofs there. Yeah. It's been, it's been the fight's off, and he's been suspended for it. So that tells me they've tried everything to cover it up, and they still can't cover it up. Let me ask you a question. If Liam Cameron was found for doping or, or PDs or clombutrol in your system after the Sheedy fight, do you think you would have got banned for a year and then six months suspension? I think it's four years, isn't it? Four-year ban. Um, that'd be crazy. I'd, I wouldn't be able to leave house. I'd have to, I'd have to lie because it's just it's a lie. You're breaking up again, it's Liam. Just, it's a pure show-up, isn't it, really, getting, getting caught. It'd be just... I might as well have burnt the bell. I might as well, honestly, I might as well have burnt the bell. And not. It means nothing if you cheat. It means absolutely nothing. Have you have you ever boxed anybody, you don't have to mention names, that you thought, hmm, you might be on something? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely? Yeah, um, 100%. How do you know the difference? No drug testing. 
and Ooh. massive fat weight. Ooh, no drug testing. There were, there were no, there were this fight, and there were no drug tested. So you mean you yeah. fought, you fought an opponent with no drug testing? Yeah, I fought, I fought, I fought a Commonwealth title, um, and the opponent weren't. There, there were no drug testing in the Commonwealth title fight, and the kid were absolutely ripped to a shred with mus muscles everywhere. And, I, and it, it was the same size as me, and I'm thinking, I'm here, frail and skinny, and this kid's absolutely massive. So I thought, that that's to me anyway. That, that's a question mark. Why weren't they no drug testing? Well, why is a fighter, why don't you say, hey, oi, what's going on here? Where's the drug testing? Are you, allowed, you must be allowed to say that. Yeah, but that's the old way I'm coming, and this one's a new Improve 2.0. Well, careful. Uh, 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 cut with a 2.0 business. I don't. Liam Cameron, say something else because David Hayes said 2.0 and he got annihilated by, by, yeah, by Belly. So don't say 2.0. Is it the Cameron curve, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> say something else. The Cameron era or something. Now, don't even say Cameron because that, that, that connects you with the Prime Minister. Oh, are you connected? Are you related to the Prime Minister by any chance? The former Prime no, Minister? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Right, so we'll have to find something else, but 2.0 is not a clever idea. Let's try something else. No, let's erase that one. <laughs> let's erase that one. On your, no, no, what's your thoughts on, on, on Bellew Hay 2, by the way? Um, I think he's going to win. I, I think he's going to win. Do you? Yeah, I think he'll win. But... You know what? It don't matter what I think anyone thinks. They're laughing. Win, lose, or draw. Yeah, that's true. That's what, true. What money they get in. So, I won't... Well, I would be, but it's not like... They're on different... They... Well, how I'm doing it is getting... Not getting the great money. It's hard. It, it's non, it's non-motivational. They've had to do it themselves, but I've had no backing or anything. When they know they're getting a million to fight, they can do anything. They, they're laughing every run. Me, when I get out of bed, aching all over the place, battered and bruised, and putting my trainers on, I've had this at seven years, and all the same pants I've had and stuff. <laughs> and good doing, doing my run, do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's horrible. It's and. Liam, so I'm, not, I'm not, not, not saying like I'm a tramp, I'm having like a laugh, but yeah, that it's horrible when you can't afford running trainers, you can't afford the best gloves, you're having to scrimp and scrape to get ringside gloves and stuff. It sounds to me you need a visit from BWTM, we'll have to do a documentary on Liam Cameron. That's it, man, anytime. Welcome. Uh, sounds like that's definitely a plan. Um, how's your mate, uh, Dave Allen from those shores? I went for a curry with him once, and he's the only man in a curry house who just orders chips and a diet coke. <laughs> he's a good I man. Was I was there with big curry, everything, and he went, I just want, I'll just have chips, please. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. They were eating chips while they were going out of fashion. Yeah, he's a good man. I, I remember sitting down and having a meal with him, too, and it was chips yeah, as well. Must be something chips. Good lad, yeah. But he is a very I good lad. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, Joe Joyce and his fight against Lenroy Thomas? Oh, I don't really. I haven't really looked into him. Uh, I think he'll win. It's, it looks, it looks, his style looks crazy. Joe Joyce is, he looks like, like he does look like a juggernaut, a stuffed juggernaut, but when he lands, he's so accurate and it is, it is, it is. It's a bit of shame for Dave Allen because that way his belt and that, he shows you in life opportunities. That way his belt and nah, it's going to be took up by the juggernaut. Is it Joyce? The, Joyce is going to take the belt on, obviously. You think he's so? Got box, he's got to box George, people like Joe Joyce to get the belt. Now, so it's a bit of a... 
What about um, Huey Fury? He's got a fight coming up against Sam Sexton. Do you know anything about that? Those two guys? Um, yeah, I think Huey Fury will win. But he might surprise me if Sam Sexton wins. Um, because I, I don't really, I don't really know those. So you break it up again. I don't, I don't really know, no, no them. Do you know what I mean? But um, I think on paper it should be. You if you were to it, uh, okay. I don't know how good I don't know how good Sam Sexton is to be fair. Okay. What are your thoughts on the uh, the comeback of Tyson Fury? Um great, great. I think he's gone through some bad times, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, getting all them belts is he's craved all his life for world titles. He wins it, he gets slagged off by the public and um Gets all his belts took off and him all freed, and all these world champions are winning him his belts. How bad that must be in watching. Yeah. Um, his title, that's going to be so, so bad for him. But he's come back, and what a man he is for coming back and, um, and doing it and proving everyone wrong. I'm, I'm happy for him, to be fair. Um, what do you make of him leaving Peter Fury to join Ben Davidson? Anything's gonna personal or anything, but I don't really know. Um, I ain't got a clue. Okay. Maybe you wanted to change. What do you make of uh, Amir Khan and the Brook situation? Um, it needs to happen. It needs to happen this year because if it don't, it's gonna be like. Ah, oh, but he would have beat him in his prime. Yeah, he would have done this. Ah, oh, this would have happened. We get him. We get him. Why do it end of the career? You get to speak up. Him. Speak up. Maybe it's the cash out fight for them both. Maybe they both know. Yeah, it's, it's cash out. His last fight. Well, yeah. it is last fight, and we'll cash out and we'll retire. Maybe <laughs> it's that. I don't know. Cash out. The cash out fight. It needs to happen, don't it? Yeah, well, for for both guys, but also a calm the cash out fight. I think. Yeah. Um. What do you what what have you made? I'm um, surely you've been affected by Joshua Mania. Um. What, what's that? The Anthony Joshua. Yeah, the whole Anthony Joshua Mania and casuals joining, wanting to watch him fight. And have you met any casuals that talk about Anthony Joshua? Um. No, not really. Really? Not to, be, not to be fair, no. Um, just, just when he boxes, we have armchair, armchair pundit saying, "Ah, he should have done this. He should have not smart." Like but everyone's behind Joshua. Um, everyone, aren't they? Really, unless, unless they have a hate, you know, just don't like his boxing as a person. But everyone other than that is, is really behind him. I think. Okay. Why well, you should be really doing pretty and proud and earning loads of money? What's main thing? Okay, uh, dream fight in Sheffield. Anybody you can have in Sh any fight you can have in Sheffield. Your dream fight at middleweight. Um, dream fight in Sheffield at middleweight. Um, it'd have to be Golovkin. I it? knew you were going to say Golovkin. I knew you were going to say Golovkin. It'd I knew have it. To be Golovkin. So, it'd have to be him. I'd take an idea in my life to be in. I'd take a good idea to be in um, with, with one of the greats and um, one of my like, people I look up to as well. And I watch him for hours on YouTube doing little stuff he does and stuff. And, Watching how he's talking, and he's just a good all rounder. I like him, he's my favorite boxer at the minute. Okay, let's let's just play hypothetical here. The fight is at in Sheffield, right? Yeah, at uh, yeah. press conference. He's predicted a drama show. You're you're gonna say you're gonna give it your best shot, blah de blah de blah de blah. You squared up against one another, you've gone into training camp. First, what's the tactics? How are you going to go about fighting Gennady Golovkin? I just have to box. I just have to box. I just have to try to box. I don't really want to. 
I just have to jab and jab and jab and jab and so I, cover up when it when it comes in, cover up all the push him off jab, but it's a it's a slow, it's a long time and twelve rounds and uh, thirty six minutes. So so there's no chance you maybe tuck in tuck up and then maybe find a left up to the body. I gave him, I gave him four rounds of hell. You tried to give him four rounds of hell. I gave him four rounds of hell. I'm saying, right, hey, this is it. Let's let slugfest. We have to slugfest that. If just I just have to, I have to go out and the shield when I get sparked. If if it, that's what it were, but okay, yeah, I'd love it. When it when it come from. All right, what do you what do you make of uh, Golovkin's next opponent, who isn't a middleweight, hasn't fought in two years, and this is the best they can come up with? What's your opinion on this fight? I don't think we can criticize it to be fair because Golovkin's done his job. He's he's trained. He's he's gone for the rematch again. He's not cheated, and he just wants to fight. And maybe we can allow him this one. Um, just allow him this one, just to get a fight in. You know what I mean? It's not his fault what's happened. Okay, okay, fair enough. Liam, um, this is your moment. Where can people follow you? On Twitter, it's Liam Cameron twenty one. Get following. I want to go back now when I inter end the interview. See about hundred more followers. Right, we're going to push that for you, Liam. Liam, do you have a message to the people listening today? What's that? Sorry, mate. Do you have a message to people listening to you today? Yeah, thanks for listening. And you're going to be hearing more of me. I'm going to be all over them, them books and them boxing monsters, boxing news. So thanks, thanks for the support. Yeah, that's it. Really. Okay. Liam Cameron, Commonwealth middleweight champion, who will be fighting this weekend on Free Sports, I believe? Yeah. Live on Free Sports. Yeah. Sheffield. There you go, and it's it's on it's on uh, free on uh, Freeview TV, correct? Yep, yeah, that's the one. That's the one there. Great stuff, Liam Cameron. Once again, thank you for being on BWTM Sports. Good luck with your fight, champ. Thank you. Took it easy, yeah. All the best, champ. You too, mate. Bye. 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 There you have it, Liam Cameron. Stay tuned tonight, 10 p.m. We have the big one, Isaac Dogba, Paul Dogba. And Melissa from Melt PR come back to BWTM live from America. He fights this weekend on Box Nation. We'll be talking to the WBO interim champion, Isaac Dogba, about his fight this weekend, his world title fight against Jesse Magdaleno. It's going to be a great interview. Speak to you then.